everybody. Hi, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. Are you guys ready to stitch out Hattie the chicken for Lori Holt's chicken salad? Well, yeah, you say. I've been ready for a week. It was released on Valentine's Day. Well, we've spent the last week learning the skills and getting everything together that we need to be able to put these chickens together. I do need to let you know, uh, there was a comment on one of the videos you need a really large hoop in order to make a lot of these chickens. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And I didn't know that until I put it together in Simply Applique. For instance, Hattie, the first one, she needs a, a, a big 10 by 14 or 10 by 16 hoop. Not all of them do. And the way to fix that, you certainly cut out all your pieces according to the shapes if you don't have one of those great big hoops. Cut out all your pieces according like you're supposed to. Once you get everything all set up on the screen and simply applique, you would actually highlight the body and the wing and the waddle and just hit delete on your keyboard. And that's going to leave your pieces that are underneath all of those in place. Then just go ahead and stitch it out and that only leaves you three pieces left to stitch down with a sewing machine. Still, you are saving loads of time and you are also building skills so that you can make other projects when you get one that does fit in your hoop. So all is not lost. I know some of you are disappointed, but if you look at the body of the chicken, it's pretty big. <laughs> I just didn't even think about it, you guys, because I've got that larger hoop. I had even wanted to make it in my multi-needle and I can't do that because the hoop on the multi-needle is not large enough. So that's just a public service announcement. Sorry about that. I know some of you might be upset, but give it a try. Even if you started sewing it down yourself using your sewing machine, about three pieces into it, you'll be like, oh no, I need to do this in the embroidery machine. Once you get the hang of it, you will absolutely love it. Even if there's a couple of pieces that you have to do the old fashioned way on the sewing machine. All right, so a couple of things I want to make note of. I'm getting ready to hoop up my big monster snap hoop. I'm going to hoop it in this. I have pre-cut my 13 and a half inch piece of background fabric, and I just did a 13 and a half inch wide strip. And then I took my ruler and I marked, let me get in here so you can see. I marked off with a friction pen a 13 and a half inch block and then I folded it in half both directions and found center just like this all in one piece it just makes it easier to hoop I think when you're not fiddling with all four sides and whatnot especially with a magnetic one um, of course you can float it as well you could certainly do that but I'm gonna just leave them all in one strip and then I'll cut them up as I, as I, uh, when I get the strip finished with three of the chickens. For the feet and the beaks, the pattern calls for a one quarter inch wide bias tape and for you to make your own using a bias tape maker, I just have a little one quarter inch strip of fabric in that yellow hashtag that I have from one of her farm girl vintage, okay? Or I think this is from her stitch line. I'm going to let it do the placement stitch and I'm going to put a tiny little bit of Elmer's glue stick on the back of this and put it inside those lines. I'm going to let it do the tack down and then I'm going to take my scissors and just trim it on this one side so that because it would have sewn down and it, it, since it's a quarter inch it will fit. And then I will let it finish up doing the final blanket stitch. So I'm just going to use this one little strip right here is going to be plenty and it's going to work out fine for all of my feet and beak pieces. Okay, I'm over here at the Luminaire and my crosshair isn't going to be right because I moved the fabric up so I'm not real worried about that. I am using for every stitch, I'm not going to change my colors, okay? Let me pull this out here for you so you can see. I'm using a really light, kind of a golden brown. I'm gonna use this on everything. There's brown in the fabric 
and I'm going to do the chick legs in this same color. The only thing I am not going to use brown for are the eyes on the on the chickens. Lori used a blue and I'm going to use a blue as well and this blue matches the blue in her fabric. There really isn't any black in the fabric at all so I just decided not to not to use any black. So I'm going to just put this blue, I've got brown on the Brown on the main spool, and I'm going to use blue here. I'll just leave that hanging there like that. So for the most part, everything is going to be in the brown. It just really blends in nicely. All right, so I have my little strip I need for my feet. I'm going to put that right over here. I have my pressing station. This is a Wooly Betty. It's a Steady Betty on one side and a Wooly Betty on the other. Y'all, I got this at the Houston show, I don't know how many years ago. It's, it's seen a lot of wear and I absolutely love it. It's holding up great. So I will be doing most of my ironing on this if I have to remove the hoop. And I can even use this and slip it up underneath if I need to. I'm using my Cricut little mini iron. I love this little thing. It's small enough to fit in here and iron all of my pieces if I need it. So I am going to need to iron my pieces down because, if you recall, I have heat and bond on all of my pieces. All of my combs and wattles are cut in her uh, solid red and all of the chicks are cut in Lori's kind of that gold color. It's a solid. So that gives me a little bit of solid there. Uh, cut down the busyness a little bit. I'm going to go into embroidery on the machine. And if you watch the video on how I digitized the chick feet, I recommend you pull that in first so that you can stitch those down and they come out underneath. And here are my chick feet right here. Those are the two that I want. I'm going to hit set. And then now I'm going to bring in the chicken. So I'll hit add. And from memory, wireless, I sent it over wirelessly. And here is Hattie right here. And I'm going to hit set. Oh, I meant to put her name on there. Let me do an ad. I really like that and I forgot to add it in. I'm going to go to A for my alphabet. Let me choose a cute font. I'm going to choose uh, number 11. So I'm going to type the H and then your sizes come up large, medium, small. I'm going to type medium. Yeah, I think that'll work. And then I'm going to go to lowercase a T T I E. Perfect. And set. Now I need to move that down and that is already selected. So I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to go to move and I'm just going to bring them down, bring down the name and put it right over here, kind of underneath her. So she's got her name. It's not as low as it's about even with the, uh, the with her heel on her foot. And I need to move the chick legs, so I'm going to hit the select button. So now I can see there's a red box around those. I'm going to move those up and move them over. And down. Okay. That looks really good. I think everything, I, I should have I hit rotate. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go to rotate. I want to rotate those legs just like a little bit. I like that a little better. Okay, and then that's great. I think that looks great. All right, so now I'm ready to go into embroidery. I'm just going to hit embroidery. It's going to stitch out the legs first, and then we're going to get to stitching everything, and I'm not changing any colors or doing anything. Everything's going to be in brown and uh, we're ready to get going. So, let's see, I'm ready. I have a uh, Oregon 7511 needle in and I have a, a 
90 weight white bobbin. There's a pretty good jump thread here. I'm going to go ahead and trim that in case the body doesn't come down and cover it. That's just one less thing. All right, so we are ready to start with the feet. So let me show you how I'm going to do this. I've got my little Elmer's glue stick right here. So it's just going to do the placement line. Put a little bit of glue on the back and I'm going to put it right inside that placement line. Don't trim it yet. I'm going to let it tack down. trim with my scissors and it's going to do the blanket stitch. I did not remove hidden stitches on these. Simply Applique or Best 4 doesn't do that very well. Uh, if I had wanted to move it into a different software it would and I would certainly have done that if I was using a satin stitch but on a blanket stitch it all pretty much just doesn't matter. So there's the first one that looks good. I want that as close to a 90 degree angle as possible. I'm going to put the joins in the middle. Don't forget when we digitized her feet, I wanted all of those feet joins to be in the center so that when the leg comes down, it will cover that. And the final satin st uh, blanket stitch. I want to take this down and show you. Look how precise that is. Isn't that incredible? That looks amazing. This is what makes it worth all the effort. Now, when I started, I continued to do um, the tack down stitches. And then I stopped, so you can see a big difference where it looks like I have a lot of brown thread right here, and here it looks a lot cleaner. So I did the placement stitch, I jumped over the tack down, and then I just stitched the final blanket stitch, lesson learned. And then on the beak, I skipped the tack down as well. So I'm going to be skipping the tack down stitch on all of these pieces, on all of my chickens. It just looks amazing placement stitch for the wing.
going to do a thread color change, so I, I cut the brown thread up by the top, and I'm pulling the tail for the blue thread, and I'm just going to twist them together and make a single loop, pull it through, and then Got a little bit of a loop. I'm gonna lift the foot. And cut that. Get that out of there. Okay. Oh, that is so cute. in the same blue as the eyes, I think. Or do I want it in the brown? No, I'll do it in blue. That way they'll all be in blue, same as the eye color. to need to trim up the jump threads on the letters. When you trim a jump thread, the needle went from point A to point B as it traveled through the design and you want to trim first at point B and that'll make it pop up and you can grab a hold of it and get a nice clean trim. It just stands up taller if you trim it that way. Trim point B first and then it'll stand up because it's got tug and pull on it when it jumped between the letters. Hey, look at that. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, you guys, Patty is all finished. She came out adorable. I'm really, really pleased with this. So lessons learned on the first chicken here. I will no longer be stitching out the tack down stitch on any of the pieces. It just came out looking a lot cleaner because the trace line, when we traced around the shapes, is the cut line. If you get that shape right exactly where it needs to be on the placement line, which is the cut line, it's going to fit just perfect. I didn't have a single bit that ever needed to be trimmed away or anything like that. And on these smaller pieces with the feet, you just get a cleaner look uh, without without doing the tack down. So I'm really pleased with this. I love the name. I think it just turned out su super cute. Let me get you in here real close so you can take a look at her. I think it came out just adorable. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut. I think Percy is this week's and get that stitched up as well. So I need to trim this to a 12 and a half inch square. So let's do that. Okay, if you have a 12 and a half inch square ruler, like if you are a subscriber to the Creative Notions and you've got your 12 and a half inch square ruler, now's the time to pull it out. I have one, but in case you guys are not subscribers, I'm going to show you how to do this. You do really want to have a, a large square ruler if you don't if you don't have a 12 and a half. You need some sort of large square ruler. It's just make your life a lot easier. And what you can do is you can take like this one here. This is a 15 inch square ruler. This is the ruler that I use for my t-shirt quilts. 
when um because my husband is ginormous shoulders and he's got great big t-shirts so i'll take a piece of washi tape and i will put it on the 12 and a half inch line like this and this makes it a lot easier for you to be able to see exactly where your 12 and a half inch square would go. So what you would want to do is now square this up and or you know center this up and fussy cut it. So I would I'm looking at this and I have like uh, three quarters of an inch between the edge of the tape and the top of the comb and right at uh, right at an inch. Let me scooch it a little bit. Okay, that's about even uh, from side to side. And then here, let's see, there's an inch and a half, and this is two. So let me go here. There's two inches there. And there's the edge of the fabric. So that looks right. Okay. I'm at half and three quarters and a little bit more than one. I'm going to bring this up. Okay, right there. So you've got to measure the distance from the end of the fabric applique piece to the edge on all these sides. Okay. Okay. So there's that one. turn this. Okay. And then I just line up the edge of the washi tape with the edge of the fabric. And this looks right. Okay. So there's my 12 and a half inch block with Hattie on it. And now I'm going to take my scissors, these are my duckbill scissors that are used for trimming uh, the back of stabilizer off of applique projects. And you want your project to drop away so you can keep an eye on the, on the fabric that you don't want to cut. If you can slice it, that's even better. Because you generally won't slice through your fabric. You'll slice there. So I'll just continue to do this and clean this up. Be very careful. You don't want to cut into your project. You want to drop the project away from you with the fabric toward you. Don't use a rotary cutter. And you want to do that because you don't want the edges of your stabilizer caught into your seam allowance on your on your chicken. This looks really good. Let me get up close. Look at that. Isn't she adorable? I love it. I think it looks great. All right. Now, if you've got some um, some tails from your knots showing on the back and you don't want them to, you can certainly trim your tails. Do not cut your knots. You can leave those tails super short and you won't have all the, um, any, you know, chance of any darker thread showing through if you're using a light background like I am. All right, you guys, that's it. We'll talk to you soon. Go says something. Bye.